Hello once again and welcome to The Master's Voice. You're welcome to this channel. I am Celestial and it's great to have you back. Uh, today I am continuing with the prophecies about Russia. I said that I would try to get them out by theme. Um, and so I, I said that I would not be uh, making every single video, but I felt that I should make this one and uh, another one that I'm going to put up after this, hopefully today. These videos take a lot of time and they take forever to upload. I did not know this. So um, let's go straight to the prophecy. This prophecy can be found on the blog, The Master's Voice. And this one was given January 9th of 2020. Um, and it's entitled North. So I mentioned that whenever it comes to talking about Russia, God always uses this word north every time you know uh, enemy from the north attack from the north captivity from the north uh, literally speaking about i guess um russia's position right there at the top of the map so let's go to it the word of the lord came to me a second time saying what do you see and i said i see a boiling pot facing away from the north then the Lord said to me, Out of the north, the evil will break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdoms of the north, declares the Lord, and they will come and they will set each one his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem and against all its walls round about and against the cities of Judah. This is Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 13 to 15. So I received at least the bottom part of this prophecy uh, very often. Sometimes, um, even when I'm not blogging, even when I'm not uh, sharing the prophecies, uh, the Lord will bring back particular scriptures. For instance, one scripture that I get without ceasing, I get this scripture almost every single day, if not every day, I will get it um, every two days or every three days, but it comes several times a week, is Isaiah chapter 9 verses 11 and 12, when it's talking about the Lord bringing up the adversaries of a particular king called Rezin. Um, who was a very proud king. And it all, always says, I will bring up the adversaries of Rezin against him and um, I will cause the nation to crumble. And for all that, the Lord uses this phrase all the time, brothers and sisters. He says, for all, for all that, my hand is stretched out still. And this is a picture of, I will bring this punishment and that punishment and that judgment. And despite all that, I am still not finished. I am still not done. My hand is stretched out still. If you can hear something in the background, that's the radiator. I waited forever for it to go silent and it clearly has no intention of being quiet. So that's what's happening in the background. So we continue. This scripture speaks of the Lord calling for a great army to come against a certain nation for judgment. From the north, this army comes and will set up thrones or powerful battlements, camps, sieges, and positions of rulership that surround this nation that God intends to punish. United States of America, this prophecy speaks about you and Russia in the future. So here is the prophecy. I'm going to read it out. Speak to this king of the north. Call him to come for the spoil. The nation of Russia will attack and destroy the nation of America. It will be a blitzkrieg revolution, a sudden invasion, quick and relatively painless for the Russians. And this word that the Lord used, blitzkrieg, is actually the description of the type of warfare that Hitler used in the Second World War. It's, it's a type of warfare that had never been seen at that time. It's just a quick punch to the system where you have sea and air and land support all at the same time. And the point of this kind of invasion is completely to bewilder your enemy, to set them back. Like, oh, you know, it, they're everywhere. It's to give the impression, like Gideon in the Bible, that you're surrounded and that you don't have a chance. So it says that this type of invasion that they've planned will be quick and, and painless for them. 
but the Americans will suffer great losses, primarily because even up to the day of invasion. Hear this word, and please mark it in your spirits, because God keeps saying it. Up to the day of invasion, we will not know that there is an attack planned. We will not know that there is an attack coming. Up to the very day of invasion, they'll have no clue that they're about to be attacked. America will be sleeping, literally and figuratively, bundled up in bed against the cold as Russian boots hit the ground. The king of the north excels in cold weather, America. You, however, do not. Russia has tactical advantages in snow. It is her old friend, but it is not your friend, America. When it snows, you go into hibernation, but the bear that is coming is very used to snow. Therefore, she will strike you in her moment of greatest advantage. Prepare for your winter wars, for the king of the north is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Now, um, I have a description here. During this prophecy, I, I saw uh, the nation of America. I saw the shores. The water was very cold. It was icy cold. And I saw huge ships landing on the shores of the nation. And uh, Russia also came up from the water, literally. Um, scuba divers and submarine warfare was included in this sudden landing. And uh, as I saw it, the sea was full of them and nobody was prepared. Icy gray sea, slate gray sky, soldiers pouring in. Russia will have advantageous partnerships that make this invasion very much to her benefit. China is one of them. Others will be revealed if and when the Lord makes them known to me. So I already shared that Russia will be coming with Ukraine. China will be coming with Taiwan. And the sense that I have is that there may be other partners because I have another prophecy where um, it's entitled Send for Their Flesh, where the Lord actually placed me um, uh, in a vision, either in a vision or a vision before me. Sometimes it's hard to tell. And I saw a meeting going on and there were lots of allies in the room and America was not invited to this meeting. This was the kind of meeting that you would never find the old UN Security Council being invited to. America wasn't there, France wasn't there, England wasn't there. None of the normal allies, you know, the, the so-called good guys, none of these people were in the room. It was a completely different type of meeting. Uh, Ukraine was there. Taiwan, China, Russia, and I think a few other nations, but they were not revealed to me. So, um, there will be superior weaponry used in this invasion that has been developed largely in China over the last few years. Weapons that right now are still being perfected and fine-tuned. You know, um... I just have to give props to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this channel is absolutely not about me, but it is totally about the Lordship of, of, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I have to say, there are times, very often, I come back to the blog and I read these prophecies back because I, I study the prophetic words of the Lord. You know, I, I'm, I'm solving the Bible like all Christians are supposed to be at this time. And sometimes the things that the Lord reveals are just amazing. Just yesterday, I saw an article and the article says, the article said, China has weapons that the United States does not know about. And he thought, look at you, God. Isn't this amazing? The Lord said this and I just obediently read it, wrote, wrote it down, right? So it's written down. And then a year later, here we are at the end of the year and I just see this article and it says, China has weapons that the United States does not know about. But yet, if you bring these things up in conversation, which I do not, people would never believe you. No one would ever believe that there's weaponry out there that we have not seen, that we have not heard about, and that other nations have that are not here. Everybody thinks that the, the highest heights of technology is here but the Lord has revealed such amazing things and they're in other prophecies and we'll get to those but let's deal with this one 
Weapons have been developed in China over the last few years, still being perfected and fine-tuned. Um, therefore, the United States will be left stunned and reeling at the force of the combined attack of these nations. Once again, I repeat, weapons that will be displayed in the end times in general will be no small destroyer of the, hu of the human population. And this was by revelation of the Lord. It also came to me, and I wrote this down. It is not the Lord Jesus Christ who develops weapons or develops evil viruses in secret labs, because I've seen that also. He does not do any of that. It is us, we human beings, in our fallen state, in our wicked and diabolical nature, in our constant fight to be better than the next person, and in our merciless desire to destroy all enemies at all costs. We do not mind if we wipe out children, old people, the young, as long as we are first. As long as we can win against an opponent, you know, the cost in human life is just uh, collateral damage. So I had to say this, that God is not the author of these things. So when we see these things coming to pass, let no one look up, as the book of Revelation says, even when they were punished, they looked up and they cursed the Lord. If the sun turns black and the sea boils, yes, that's God. None of us has the technology to boil a sea or to make the sun turn black. But that picture in Revelation is talking about the hardness of man's heart. That even when these punishments rain down from the Father from a great height, to chastise us, people in the end times will still curse God. This, to me, is a, a complete indication of where we are, we as people. Because there's a habit in the Christian community to say, I'm not a part of this. I'm different. I'm not partaking in these things. Ladies and gentlemen, understand this. God's, God's view of sin especially when, when judgment is on a nation, is collective. This is why many of the prophecies that I have received, God says that the judgment will come and the just and the unjust will see it. Just and unjust means the saved and the unsaved. If something happens in this country, even though I'm sitting here and I'm speaking for the Lord at his commission, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be happening in my street, on my block. In my state, I live in New York. That doesn't mean that New York is going to be exempt. In fact, I have tons of prophecies that shows that New York is going to receive a greater and a harsher judgment because the things that we do here are insane and complete slaps against the Lord. So God is not the one who does these things. It's us, humanity. It is the spiraling seed of our wickedness, our black-heartedness, our cruelty, and our sheer selfishness that causes us to do these things. So when the Spirit of God speaks these secrets, he is only showing them as an all-knowing observer from heaven who knows what mankind is developing to destroy one another here on the earth. Please always keep that in mind. We, humanity, are the wicked ones here, and we will pay for it. Other prophecies that you can look at on the blog concerning this type of sudden invasion, sudden appearance of the Russians and the Chinese, you can look at the prophecy titled Enemy at the Gates and also the one titled D-Day. I'll put the links for them in the box below. And as I always say, thank you for visiting with me here on The Master's Voice. Um, I'm Celestial. Let's take these words of the Lord to heart. Let's take them up in prayer. Brothers and sisters, the church is, I see us as a ring. I see the world and I see us as few as we are. And, and with all the struggles that we have going on, there's not a single person that I know that doesn't have problems. Everybody has problems. You know, as long as we are in the body, we will face so many things. And this is why Jesus said, Lord, I pray for them. You know, not that you will take them out of the world, but that you will keep them in the world. But despite all the afflictions of the righteous. The Bible says that God will deliver us out of them all. And it is our job. It is our commission as the church to pray. We're not just here to lament. We're not just here. This is a word for somebody. We're not just here to pray for God to snatch us out of the rapture. If anyone's been reading Celestial's blog for even five minutes, you will know how I feel about that. 
I feel, and the Lord always communicates to my spirit, that it is a, a, a very quitting, it's a very quit-worthy thing to keep saying, oh Lord, to the skies, to the skies. I see that on the internet so much. Christians have just opted out of life. They have just shut down. The problems are too many. They don't want to push back anymore. They don't want to pray anymore. They don't want to fast anymore. They don't want to fight the good fight of faith anymore. It's just like, oh, see you in the skies. And I'm thinking, yeah, not that soon. Not that quick. The rapture is not tomorrow. I am not a rapture date setter. You know how I feel about it. If you read the blog, I have no time for rapture math. Personally, I struggle with math anyway. Um, but, but I'm not that bad at it, but it's just not my favorite, but I have no time for rapture math where people are the weight of the sun plus, uh, of the virgin coming through the planet Jupiter equals, um, John's gospel means that, uh, we're going next Tuesday. Uh, there's way too much hunger for people to be raptured. And this tells me that people have opted out of the great commission, which is to go out into all the world preach the gospel, and make disciples of all nations. All nations are not yet disciples. In fact, Islam is one of the fastest growing religions in the world at this time. So that tells me that all nations are not disciples of the Lord. And this thing of just wanting God to come and snatch you simply because you have decided to subside in your spirit, you you do not want to actually give the, the, the devil two black eyes, um, um, take the scripture, believe the word of God, stand on the word of God, fight the good fight of faith. Why would you want to be raptured, for instance, if your family members are not born again? If you're a family of seven, family of five, or you, you're, you're a mom and a dad and you have that one son, that one daughter, and your son and daughter, you raised them in the Christian tradition, you gave them a, the best start that parents can give in life, right? Your kids were raised on the foundation of the rock, and then your kids went off to co college, right? And, and, and they were completely decimated by philosophy and Nietzsche and all the other uh, um, madness that is taught in college nowadays, right? Your child came home a corrupted parody and you could not see the reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ in them. You, you try to share videos with them. You try to talk to them about prophecy and what's happening in the world. And your child is so tuned out. My mom is crazy. My mom is following the cult of some woman on the internet, right? They don't want to listen to you. Why on earth are you longing for the rapture? Do you want to see your child left here to go through the great tribulation? Do you want to see your child put into hell like a potato that will be baked forever? Why are we quitting on what Jesus said to us? What did Jesus say to us, Celestial? He said, occupy until I come. To occupy means that you fully expand and take the territory. God expects us to expand and take the territory. We are in frightening times. These people are building a literal rat trap around us in the shape of the new world order. And the answer to that is not to say, mm -mm, come Lord Jesus and snatch me. We have not yet finished the work that we have to do. And I'm so glad the Lord has given me prophecies about that, that actually back up what I'm saying. So you won't say, oh, this is just her opinion. I'm not bounded to her opinion. I have opinions, but this channel is not to share my opinion. This channel is to share forth what the Lord God has made known to me so that we can understand that he fully expects us to keep witnessing and winning the lost at any cost. God also wants to stir us up from the apathy and just from, oh, Satan's got me on the ropes. Satan is wicked. The devil is diabolical. I am a living testament of that. I don't look like what I've been through. But one thing that I have determined is that as long as I have breath, by his grace, I will praise Yeshua. I will worship Yah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise and his testimonies will continually be in my mouth. So I am encouraging someone out there. If you have packed up mentally and you're just waiting to see someone putting up a prophecy that says, oh, Jesus said he'll be here next Tuesday. This is not that channel. This is the channel that says we need to be awake. We need to be aware. We need to be alert. We need to be useful members of the kingdom. We need to be building this thing brick by brick. We need to be saying, God, what do you want me to do? 
instead of me spending all my time worrying about whether I divest myself of all my investments and buy gold and buy silver, haven't we read the scripture that says that the silver and the gold is going to be worthless and it's going to be laying on the street and we're going to be walking on it? I have actually had a dream like that. My sister and I, my brothers and I, we were walking on the street and there was currency on the street. There was pounds, there was Deutschmark, there was euros, there was of course the mighty greenback. There were precious stones and things like that laying on the street. And my family and I were part of a great multitude. We were going somewhere. I have no idea where we were going, but I could see that we were making a trek. We were walking with a lot of people and we were walking on things that people would kill their own mother for today. You know, necklaces and things like that. We were walking on it because we were in a world where those things had no more value. So I'm not the Wall Street person that's going to tell you, oh, buy silver, buy gold. I see a lot of that on the internet and I have nothing to say. I have no money to buy silver or gold, you know. Um, groceries is probably where it's at for me. So I, I have no opinion on that. But what I know, um, I, feel, I feel bound by the Lord to share. I have had a dream where I'm walking on currency, I'm walking on money, and those things have ceased to have value. So this just tells me that there is yet a road ahead. And I think that it is wisdom. If there is a road ahead, you need to prepare for that road ahead instead of thinking that the road ahead is suddenly that your clothes are going to melt off you and off you go into the sky to the wedding supper of the Lamb. The wedding supper of the Lamb is not yet. We haven't seen the Antichrist. Read Matthew 24 again slowly. Take it from about verse 5 and just read slowly. And look at the chronology of events. It does not tell you that Jesus is coming for us tomorrow. There is work yet to do. I'm not going to tell anybody that I've solved Bible prophecy, but what I know is that I like to read and understand. I've been doing it since I was a child, and I find that when you read without your personal filters, when you simply read what's written, and you ask the Lord to minister it back to you, you can come to a much greater understanding than you thought you had. So this is Celestial with the Master's Voice. We've covered the prophecy north. And by the grace of the Lord, I'll be able to do another one tomorrow. Uh, thank you for visiting and thank you for watching. Please subscribe and please hit the notification bell so that you can get updates when a new video goes live. And then you don't always have to wait for me to put the link on the blog. Share these videos. God bless you. And you are absolutely welcome to come back and share more with me next time. Goodbye.